If you're doing this swirl technique, you typically want to start from your natural growth pattern and wrap it. So it always starts and leads back to the front. What's happening? It's your man, the Marcus Harvey, the Barber Star. Once again, it's on. And what are we here to do today? Learn how to get the waves. Get the waves for the babes. You know how they be like, oh, you got waves? Oh, you got waves? You be like, yeah, I got waves, girl. Oh, let me touch your waves. No, you can't touch my waves, girl. That's what I'm about to teach y'all, how to get that type of feel going on. So let's get to it. So what are waves? Waves are the training of your curly hair to be laid down in a wave pattern. So there's many different wave patterns. 180 is the one that I have. Why is it called the 180? It's because I have a fade with my waves. Other people who have this dope type of haircut, Nas. Also, my guy Drake, he's fly with it. The most popular wave pattern is the 360 waves. This is something that we all had as a kid. ASAP Ferg has it, Mike Rainey has it, P Diddy. Jalen Rose, shouts out to my guy Andy Often for keeping that haircut tight. There's also the 540 and the 720, which are very, very rare. Only person that I know who's had the 720 was probably Lance, because I'm talking about Lance was brushing that thing from over here. He was coming from the back like, ugh. We're gonna be walking down the whole process of getting your waves together. The things you're gonna need to optimize your waves. A brush, do-rag. Shampoo, conditioner, moisturizing products. And you gotta have a dope barber. Shouts out to my barber, Donato. He got me fresh, y'all. Let's, let's look at it, man. Oh, you saw me too over there? Okay. Step one, prepare and wash your hair. Now, there's been a big myth out there in the world that you can over shampoo your hair. Yes, if you're not putting in product to add moisture back in, but in this process, we're gonna be adding moisture in multiple steps. So you can never over shampoo your hair, you can never over condition your hair, especially when you wanna get optimum waves. So I suggest that you shampoo three times a week and every day condition your hair while you're in the shower, just so that you can make sure that your hair is at its optimum softness, get rid of any built up product that was in from the day before. And I know that my hair is gonna be soft, manageable, and just gonna be obedient to my brush. So once you have a healthy scalp, it is imperative that you find the right barber. Now the right barber is gonna set up the parameters of your ways. You're gonna go through a process called woofing. Woofing is growing your hair out to crazy lengths, but still brushing your hair in the wave pattern that you want it to be. Now this process can be as long as months, as long as weeks. The longer you're making, letting them things woof, the, the deeper your waves can be. Step two, moisturizing. So the most common things that keep you from having your hair wavy is not moisturizing your hair. Leaving your hair being dry does not allow it to be trained, right? So wet dry memory is the thing that gets your hair to allowing it to be able to do what it needs to do to give you the wave pattern. So the more moisture you have in your hair, the more manageable it is, the more it obeys your commands, the more it lays down. Now this, is very important because once you get out the shower, you wanna leave your hair just damp. You don't wanna go ahead and dry it all the way up. You do not wanna do that. You wanna leave your hair damp. That way that when you use the product, it can actually go through your hair smoothly. As we talked about before, wet, dry memory. When you use the product, it kind of falls into place with the way you're going to brush your hair. So let me show you how to do it. Since my hair is dry, but it's clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just dampen my hair with a little spray bottle, very simple. So when you have thicker hair, uh, more coarse hair, you wanna use a product that's more of a, a bomb, more of a scalp butter, a wave butter. You already know, there's always that old school red can that you could get or that gold can, but we know it's too thick for your hair. You wanna make sure that your hair is actually breathing, your scalp is healthy. You do not want to have something that clogs up your pores. So make sure that it's either water-based or it has a very good butter base to it so that it can actually not clog up your pores. I like using Co-Labels Wave Butter as well as Bevel's Beard Balm. It's a great product. It actually doubles as a beard balm as well as a pomade. Gives you a nice light hold, allows you to really get your waves shining, shining. So let me go ahead and show you how we do it. A little dime's worth, nickel's worth of Product in my hand, emulsify it in my hands. 
When I get out the shower, I like to do this process like this. It kind of almost dries the hair as well as kind of gives you a nice booster because the oils from your hand as well as the heat from your hand lays down the waves. So it kind of gives it a nice little, as you can see already, just, this is just me just rubbing through my hair, putting the brush. So then as I've applied it, put a little bit of the, the same, a nickel's worth of the beard balm. Most fired in your hands. Everybody finds their own technique and hack. This has been mine for years. Now with me having 180 waves, as you can see, I just applied it on the top. But if you want 360 waves and you want it all the way around your hair, you literally do that same process around right where the waves are and do the same application. You're making sure that you put ample, ample pressure. The more you like lay your hair down with your hands, the heat from your hands helps and aids in the waves development. All right, so now that I probably did that about 60 to 80 times, you always wanna go with the grain on your waves. You never wanna go against grain. Ladies, let me, let me, this is a sidebar for you ladies. If your man has waves, please don't go against the grain brushing it or putting your hands through it. Oh, no, that's, that's causes for breakup. You're not getting a Valentine's Day gift if you push against my waves. Step three, brushing your hair. As we all know, the brushing technique is the only technique that you can do all day long. I like to get a medium bristled brush, typically boar's hair type of situation. Definitely wanna make sure that the bristles are close together. You don't wanna get a brush that has very wide gaping lines. Depending on how long your hair is, depends on how hard you want your bristles to be. If you have very, very coarse hair and your hair is really long in the woofing process, you might want to use a hard bristle brush. I typically like to use the medium bristled brushes, but you must always brush your hair at least a minimum of four to five times a day. If you wanna make your waves really, really pop, you have to be committed to it that strongly. There's two types of wave art, the beehive and the swirl. So if you're doing the beehive versus the swirl, the beehive typically starts from the natural growth pattern and all you do is just go straight down, all the way around, straight down and that is the beehive. If you're doing the swirl technique, you typically wanna start from your natural growth pattern and wrap it. So it always starts and leads back to the front. This is how Lance brushes his hair and a lot of people who have that type of texture. And then they just kind of brush it like that. It's definitely more at an angle and you definitely want to make sure that the brush is resting on the hair strand and not scraping the scalp. That just ruined all that work I just got done doing. Now let's go back to the way I brush it. The regular standard beehive with the 180 in one direction. So typically everybody has their own rhythm in which they brush their hair. I like to do things in hundreds. So I like to always do like a hundred strokes of the brush over my hair, just so that I can make sure that it's laid down and looking exactly the way I want it to look when I bring it out of the do-rag. Step four, the do-rag. You wear the do-rag when you're going to work, when you get out the shower, and then when you take a shower, going to bed, you do the same process over again. You might not wanna tie it as tight, but you wanna make sure that it's secure so that at night while you're sleeping, it's still locking in the moisture and it's still training your hair strand to do exactly what you wanted to do, which is wave up. And like I said before, you wanna always make sure that your hair is still damp before you put your do-rag on. All right, so there are several different types of do-rags. You have velvet, a silk polyester blend, which is the type that I typically like to use because it locks in moisture. It also holds the waves in place and it allows you to keep the, the pattern that you just got done brushing and rubbing into your head, laying it down and establishing and holding it there so it can bake. All right, I like to put my do-rag on inside out. This is the number one thing. You wanna make sure that the lining is on the outside because if you have it on the inside, you'll have a line in the middle of your hair. So you always wanna make sure that the hem is on the outside. I like to have my hands underneath it so that it doesn't disturb whatever I brushed. And then I like to place it right over your eyebrows. 
Now, this is the way that you tie it so that you don't get a line. Brothers have been getting lines from their do-rags for years. You gotta actually use the way that the do-rag is cut. So they're making wider joints now. So what do I do? Keep it wide. Right over my eyebrows. And then you tie it in the back like a shoe. Second portion, you pull out so that it pulls the hair down. You also adjust the ties underneath your occipital bone. And you pull the front part as well as the back part where the hem is. And you pull opposite directions to make it tighter. Once you do that, and then you roll it up right there. All right. And that's for the front. Now you always have this leftover in the back. What I like to do is roll it again and then tie it in the back like a shoe again. And that's how you apply your do-rag so without getting a line. Now typically the reason why you get a line is because you would make sure that the, the, the ties would be too thin and all that pressure would just go right on that spot. So when you're widening in it, with the strand, it applies the pressure all the way around here so it doesn't give you that do-rag line. Sometimes you're gonna get a run in your do-rag, but that's because you wanna keep it tight. Get many do-rags, because you will put a run in that thing to get them weight. And that might have just been a wet, one of my ways of saying, I gotta get out now! But you wanna keep your do-rag on for at least 30 minutes. This allows your hair to dry underneath it, like we said before, wet dry memory allows your wave pattern to know exactly what it's gonna do. So you wanna keep this on until your hair actually dries. This whole process is right after the shower, so you can get dressed, fix you a cup of coffee, get in the car, drive halfway to work, and then what I like to do is I like to unleash one level, which is the front level. I untie that, and then I let that go. Five minutes before you're about to pull up to work, and then I just let it, kind of breathe and that, that does is just allows whatever indention that was created on the right, right over to kind of work its way back. And then just let that thing go, pull up to work. All right, all right. Boom, boom, boom. And you let that thing, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Y'all gonna have to send the Coast Guard out for this. The fifth and final step, consistency. Consistency is the key to allowing your waves to be unleashed. The more consistent you are with this technique, brushing, moisturizing, shampoo and conditioning, do racking your hair, the better your waves are gonna be. I'm gonna tap back in with y'all in two weeks and let you see what consistent brushing, moisturizing, do ragging gets you. I am your man, the Marcus Harvey, the Barber Star, and I'm here to tell you why not be fresh. Why? Because clean never goes out of style. We're here at the Moose Lair. Come tap in with us. I'm a good barber. You know other good barbers here. Shouts out to Donato. You got me fresh, bro. We'll see you next time, GQ. Yeah.